In the 1980s, the HIV-AIDS epidemic spread rapidly, regardless of social class. Black celebrities and other individuals have sacrificed in this race for status and sexuality. Their legacy is a symbol of sharpness and courage, never to be forgotten. Welcome back to Hourglass Channel. Find yourself a suitable sitting position to start your journey today. Arthur Ashe began playing tennis as a child in his hometown of Richmond, Virginia, at the age of seven. Throughout his illustrious career, he achieved remarkable success, securing three Grand Slam titles and retiring with an impressive record of 818 wins. Notably, Ashe broke barriers as the first black tennis player to win the U. Open, the Australian Open, and Wimbledon. Additionally, his pioneering spirit led to his selection as the first black player for the United States Davis Cup team in 1963. Even after retiring in 1979, Ash continued to contribute to the sport, coaching the team to two titles in 1988. However, Ash faced an unexpected challenge when he began experiencing difficulty moving his right hand. Medical examinations revealed a mass on the left side of his brain, prompting immediate surgical intervention. Further investigations uncovered that Ash was not only HIV positive, but had also developed AIDS. It is believed that he contracted the virus from a blood transfusion during his second heart surgery in 1983, a time when blood supplies weren't routinely screened for certain contaminants. Despite his diagnosis, Ash chose to keep his health condition private until a newspaper revealed its intention to publish an article about his undisclosed illness. On April 8, 1992, Ash courageously held a press conference, disclosing his battle with AIDS and acknowledging that he had been aware of his condition since 1988. Tragically, Ash passed away on February 6, 1993, at the age of 49, leaving behind a legacy that transcends the realm of tennis. Interesting things are waiting for you in the video. Kenny Green was indeed the lead singer of the 90SR and B-group intro, and he played a significant role in writing and producing most of the group's songs. The group gained prominence after being discovered by the late Heavy D and is widely recognized for their hits, such as Let Me Be The One, Ribbon In The Sky, and Come Inside. In 2001, during a phone interview while lying in a hospital bed, Kenny bravely shared his health status with the world, revealing that he was battling AIDS. Despite his courageous disclosure, the illness eventually took its toll. Three months later, on October 1, he succumbed to the disease. He was 32. Kenny Green's untimely passing marked the loss of a talented musician and songwriter whose contributions to the R&B genre left an indelible mark on the music industry. His bravery in sharing his health struggles served as a reminder of the importance of raising awareness about HIV AIDS and the ongoing need for support and compassion for those affected by the disease. Kenny Green's brave decision to share his truth serves as a beacon of hope and inspiration, encouraging openness and compassion in the face of adversity. His memory lives on, not only through his timeless music, but also through the lasting impact he made on the lives of those who were fortunate enough to hear his soulful voice and feel the depth of his emotion. If you want to explore the journey with me, please leave number one and watch this video until the end. Gene Anthony Ray is best known for his portrayal of the street smart dancer Leroy Johnson in the 1980 film Fame and its television spin off of the same name, which aired from 1982 to 1987. Tragically, Gene suffered a stroke in June 2003, and he passed away from complications of the stroke five months later on November 14 in Manhattan, New York. Although he was HIV positive at the time of his death, it has not been revealed whether his demise was caused by AIDS-related complications. Gene Anthony Ray was 41 years old. Jermaine Stewart gained recognition in the 1980s as a dancer on the musical variety show Soul Train. However, he is best remembered for his biggest hit, We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off, from his 1986 album Frantic Romantic. Sadly, Jermaine Stewart passed away on March 17, 1997, due to AIDS-related health issues. He was only 39 years old. Remarkably, 
his grave marker remained without a tombstone for over 17 years until a dedicated fan paid for a headstone in 2014. These talented individuals left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry, and their legacies continue to be celebrated by fans worldwide. What's better than starting the day with a delicious cup of tea and watching this fascinating video together? Alan Wiggins, once a promising talent in Major League Baseball, saw his career and life spiral out of control due to a crippling addiction to hard drugs. Playing for the San Diego Padres and the Baltimore Orioles from 1981 to 1987, Wiggins showcased exceptional skills on the field. However, behind the scenes, he battled with addiction, which ultimately led to his downfall. Despite his athletic prowess, Wiggins struggled with substance abuse, resulting in erratic behavior and strained relationships within the league. His addiction worsened over time, leading to his indefinite suspension from professional baseball. This marked a tragic end of his once promising career. Shortly after his dismissal from the league, Wiggins faced another devastating blow when he was diagnosed with HIV contracted through intravenous drug use. His health rapidly declined and on January 6, 1991, Wiggins succumbed to complications of AIDS, weighing less than 75 pounds at the time of his passing. He was only 32 years old. Alan Wiggins' story serves as a stark reminder of the destructive power of addiction and the toll it can take on individuals and their loved ones. His untimely death serves as a sobering reminder of the importance of seeking help and support when struggling with addiction. Alvin Ailey, a trailblazing modern dancer and choreographer, made an indelible mark on the world of dance with his groundbreaking work and visionary approach. Born in 1931 in Rogers, Texas, Ailey's artistic journey led him to establish the iconic Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater in 1958 in New York City. Through his choreography, Ailey sought to celebrate and honor the richness of black culture, using dance as a medium of expression and empowerment. One of Ailey's most renowned creations is his 1960 masterpiece, Revelations. This ballet, deeply rooted in the African-American experience, remains one of the most cherished and frequently performed works in the world of dance. With its soul-stirring blend of gospel, blues, and spiritual music, Revelations continues to captivate audiences with its emotional resonance and timeless beauty. Despite his artistic triumphs, Ailey faced personal challenges, including a battle with illness. Tragically, he was diagnosed with an AIDS-related illness, which claimed his life on December 1st, 1989, at the age of 58. Ailey's untimely passing was mourned by the dance community and beyond, yet his legacy endures as a beacon of inspiration and cultural significance. Today, the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater remains a testament to Ailey's enduring influence continuing to honor his legacy through innovative performances and outreach programs. Ailey's commitment to diversity, excellence, and the transformative power of dance continues to inspire generations of artists and audiences worldwide, ensuring that his impact on the world of dance will be felt for years to come. Chad Kinch was a professional basketball player who notably played for the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Dallas Mavericks during the 1981-1981 NBA season. Despite his brief tenure in the league, Kinch made an impact, averaging 2.9 points per game during his time on the court. Following his departure from the NBA, Kinch faced personal challenges, including family issues, which led him down a troubled path. He struggled with drug addiction, a battle that intensified over time. Sadly, Kinch's life took a tragic turn when he contracted HIV. On April 3, 1994, at the age of 35, Chad Kinch passed away from AIDS-related complications. His untimely death served as a stark reminder of the devastating impact of both drug addiction and HIV-AIDS. Despite his struggles, 
Kinch's legacy endures in the memories of basketball fans and those who knew him. His story serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of substance abuse and the importance of seeking support in times of need. Don't forget to drink a cup of tea to quench your thirst and comment number one to let me know that you are still watching this video. Franklin Seals is renowned for his television roles, notably as Lorenzo Hollingsworth on the 1980s sitcom A Men and his business manager Dexter Stuffins on Silver Spoons. His portrayal of these characters left a lasting impression on audiences, showcasing his talent and versatility as an actor. In 1987, while working on the set of Amen during its first season, Seals developed a persistent cough, signaling health issues that would plague him for the remainder of his life. This illness prevented him from working regularly in the years that followed, impacting both his career and personal life. Tragically, on May 14, 1990, at the young age of 37, Franklin Seals passed away from complications of AIDS. His untimely death sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry, highlighting the devastating impact of the disease. In accordance with his wishes, Seals was cremated, and his ashes were scattered in the Caribbean Sea a final resting place reflective of his Caribbean heritage. Franklin Seals' legacy lives on through his memorable performances and contributions to television. His talent and presence continue to be celebrated by fans and colleagues alike, serving as a reminder of the importance of raising awareness about HIV AIDS and supporting those affected by the disease. Howard Rollins is celebrated for his groundbreaking role as Captain Davenport in the 1984 box office Hit a Soldier Story. This performance catapulted him into the limelight and paved the way for his iconic portrayal of Virgil Tibbs on the television crime drama In the Heat of the Night, adapted from the 1967 film of the same name. The series debuted in 1988 showcasing Roland's talent as he breathed life into the character of Virgil Tibbs on the small screen. However, behind the scenes, Roland's grappled with drug addiction, stemming from personal and legal troubles that haunted him throughout his life. Despite his personal struggles, Roland's continued to captivate audiences with his performances. However, his battle with addiction ultimately led to his departure from In the Heat of the Night at the conclusion of its sixth season. He was subsequently replaced by Carl Weathers in the fall of 1996. Tragically, Roland's health declined further, and he was diagnosed with AIDS. Just six weeks later, in 2006, Howard Rollins passed away, leaving behind a legacy of talent and accomplishment in the entertainment industry. In recognition of his contributions, a wax statue of Rollins was unveiled at the Senator Theater in Baltimore. Today, the statue is housed at the Great Blacks and Wax Museum, serving as a lasting tribute to Roland's enduring impact and legacy. Please comment number one to let me know that you will be with us until the end of this video. Kevin Peter Hall left an indelible mark in the entertainment industry with his towering presence and remarkable talent. He rose to prominence with his iconic roles in the 1987 science fiction blockbuster Predator and its 1990 sequel, where his imposing stature and commanding performance as the titular alien hunter captivated audiences worldwide. Additionally, Hall showcased his versatility as an actor in the beloved comedy film Harry and the Hendersons, portraying the gentle Bigfoot alongside John Lithgow. Behind the scenes, Hall shared his life with actress Elena Reed, known for her memorable roles as Olivia Robinson on the iconic children's program Sesame Street, and Rose Lee Holloway in the popular 1980 sitcom 227. Their partnership was a testament to their shared passion for the arts and their commitment to each other. In 1990, tragedy struck when Hal was involved in a serious car accident, necessitating a life-saving blood transfusion during surgery. It was during this period of medical treatment that Hall received the devastating diagnosis of HIV. Despite his courageous battle against the illness, Hal's health deteriorated rapidly, and he ultimately succumbed to AIDS-related pneumonia on April 10, 1991, just shy of his 36th birthday.
Gil Scott Heron was a visionary artist known for his unique fusion of poetry and music, crafting powerful and socially relevant lyrical content. Among his most notable works is the iconic 1970S track The Revolution Will Not Be Televised, a politically charged anthem that dissected the struggles of black Americans during that tumultuous era. In a candid 2008 interview with New York Magazine, Gil Scott Heron opened up about his personal battles, revealing that he had contracted HIV after years of grappling with drug and alcohol abuse. This revelation shed light on the challenges he faced in his life, adding depth to his already impactful body of work. Tragically, Gil Scott Heron passed away on May 27, 2011, at a hospital in New York City. While the exact cause of his death remains undisclosed, it is widely acknowledged that his health struggles, exacerbated by his HIV diagnosis, played a significant role. He was 62 years old at the time of his passing. Despite his untimely departure, Gil Scott Heron's influence and legacy endure through his enduring music and profound insights. His ability to blend artistry with activism continues to inspire generations, encouraging critical dialogue and social change. Escarita, also known as Escarita, was a remarkable pianist, R&B singer, and songwriter celebrated for his electrifying performances. His frenetic stage presence and dynamic style were influential, inspiring the legendary rock and roll icon, Little Richard. Some aficionados of music even argue that Escarita is the true originator of rock and roll, recognizing his pioneering contributions to the genre. Despite his undeniable impact on music history, Escarita's life was tragically cut short. He passed away from AIDS-related complications on October 23, 1986. His legacy continues to resonate through his innovative music and enduring influence on subsequent generations of musicians. Escarita's groundbreaking contributions to the world of music ensure that his memory lives on, cherished by fans and revered by fellow artists alike. Don't rush to escape this boring video and forget comment number two, I will change it if I know you hate it. Max Robinson was indeed the first African-American news anchor to gain prominence in the United States. He joined the Eyewitness News team for Channel 9 in Washington, D.C. in 1969 and later became an anchor for a BC News and World News Tonight in 1978 making history in the field of broadcast journalism. In economic news, the index of leading indicators, which is meant to forecast the direction of the economy, rose 1.4% in February, marking the sixth consecutive month of increase. Unfortunately, Max Robinson's health declined when he was hospitalized for pneumonia in Illinois in December 1987, leading to the discovery that he had AIDS. Despite widespread speculation about his health, he and his family chose to keep his illness private, refraining from disclosing any details to the public. However, in the fall of 1988, while delivering a speech at Howard University, Max's health deteriorated, and he was admitted to the university hospital, where he remained in critical condition for several months. Tragically, he passed away on December 23 due to complications from AIDS. Before his death, Robinson asked his family to disclose his AIDS diagnosis to raise awareness in the black community about the syndrome and the importance of treatment and education. His bravery in addressing such a sensitive issue remains a significant aspect of his legacy. Larry Riley is widely recognized for his memorable performances, notably as C.J. Memphis in the movie A Soldier's Story and as Frank Williams on the popular primetime television soap opera Knott's Landing. However, beyond his on-screen success, Larry faced a private battle with HIV. In 1990, following a diagnosis confirming his HIV-positive status, Larry made the courageous decision to continue his professional pursuits while keeping his illness hidden from the public eye. Despite the challenges he faced, including significant weight loss, Larry maintained his composure and informed his colleagues and friends that his physical changes were due to kidney failure resulting from high blood pressure. Tragically, Larry's struggle with AIDS came to an end on June 6, 
1992, when he passed away at the age of 38. It was only after his death that his wife, Nina, disclosed the truth about his health condition. Larry's story is a poignant reminder of the stigma surrounding HIV AIDS and the courage required to navigate such personal battles while maintaining a public persona. Despite the challenges he faced, Larry's contributions to the entertainment industry remain a testament to his talent and dedication. His legacy continues to inspire and resonate with audiences, serving as a reminder of the importance of compassion and understanding in the face of adversity. Sylvester James Jr., renowned as the Queen of Disco, enchanted audiences with his flamboyant persona, soulful falsetto voice, and timeless hit You Make Me Feel Mighty Real. However, tragedy struck in 1985 when Sylvester's partner, Rick Kramer, was diagnosed with HIV. Despite their love, Kramer's health rapidly declined, and he passed away in 1987. Devastated by Kramer's death, Sylvester initially avoided HIV testing, despite suspecting his own infection. Months later, as he battled a persistent cough, he finally sought medical help, only to receive the devastating diagnosis of AIDS. Despite his declining health, Sylvester courageously used his platform to raise awareness and to stigmatize AIDS. He passed away on December 16, 1988, at 41, leaving behind a legacy of love and advocacy. In his will, he directed royalties from his music to AIDS charities, ensuring his impact continued beyond his life. Sylvester's story remains a poignant reminder of the resilience and compassion needed in the face of adversity. Charlie Barnett emerged as a comedic force in the vibrant atmosphere of late 1970s New York City, where his unique blend of humor and charisma captivated audiences. Rising through the ranks of the comedy scene, Barnett carved out a name for himself with his sharp wit and dynamic performances. His breakthrough came with notable roles such as Tyrone in the 1983 film DC Cab and the endearing Noogie on the iconic television series Miami Vice. These performances showcased Barnett's versatility and solidified his status as a beloved figure in entertainment. Tragically, Barnett's promising career was cut short when he lost his battle with AIDS on March 16, 1996, at the age of 41. His passing left a void in the comedy world, but his legacy continued to resonate. Renowned comedian Dave Chappelle has frequently acknowledged Barnett's influence on his own comedic journey citing him as a source of inspiration and admiration. Barnett's comedic brilliance and enduring impact serve as a testament to his talent and the indelible mark he left on the comedy landscape. Willie Smith is celebrated as one of the most influential young black fashion designers in history. His unexpected passing on April 17, 1987, at the age of 39 sent shockwaves through the fashion world. Initially hospitalized for shigellosis and pneumonia, it was later revealed by his attorney that Smith's death was AIDS-related. Remarkably, Smith himself was unaware of his HIV-positive status and had shown no symptoms of the virus. It wasn't until he was hospitalized that tests confirmed his diagnosis. Despite this devastating revelation, Smith's impact on the fashion industry remained unparalleled. At the time of his death, Smith's clothing company, Willyware Limited, had achieved remarkable success, grossing over $25 million in sales. His innovative designs and groundbreaking approach to fashion continue to influence designers and inspire creativity today. Willie Smith's legacy as a visionary designer and trailblazer in the fashion world endures, leaving an indelible mark on the industry. Sharon Redd was indeed a multifaceted talent, known for her prowess as a singer, 
dancer, and songwriter. Born into a family with a deep musical background, Red's passion for singing blossomed from an early age. She honed her skills as a background vocalist, lending her voice to various artists before ultimately embarking on a successful solo career in the early 1980s. During her solo journey, Sharon Red captivated audiences with her captivating performances and infectious energy. Her disco hits, including Love, How You Feel, and In the Name of Love, soared up the charts and solidified her status as a prominent figure in the music industry. Tragically, Sharon Red's life was cut short on May 1 est, 1992, when she succumbed to complications from AIDS-related pneumonia. Her untimely passing sent shockwaves through the music community, leaving behind a legacy of unforgettable music and timeless performances. Despite her premature departure, Sharon Red's contributions to music continue to resonate with fans worldwide, ensuring that her spirit lives on through her enduring artistry. David Cole stood as one of the co-founders of the legendary music group CC Music Factory, whose tunes became anthems of the early 1990s, resonating across borders and cultures. The group soared to worldwide fame with their infectious hits, Gonna Make You Sweat, and Here We Go, Let's Rock and Roll, dominating the airwaves and dance floors alike. Tragically, on January 24, 1995, when David was merely 32 years old, the devastating news of his passing reverberated throughout the music industry. It was announced by a fellow band member that David had succumbed to the grips of spinal meningitis after a prolonged and arduous battle. The sudden loss sent shockwaves through fans and peers alike, leaving behind a void that could never be fully filled. However, amidst the grief and mourning, Whispers and speculations began to circulate within the industry regarding the true cause of David's untimely demise. Some suggested that his death might have been the result of complications arising from AIDS, a speculation fueled by the stigma and fear surrounding the disease during that era. Yet, despite these conjectures, no concrete evidence has ever surfaced to substantiate such claims. In a poignant tribute to David's memory and the mark he left on the music world, Mariah Carey, an icon in her own right, paid homage through the release of the heartfelt single One Sweet Day. Featuring the harmonious vocals of Boys I I Men, the song served as both a touching tribute to a lost talent and a testament to the enduring power of music to heal and unite in times of loss. Eric Wright, better known by his stage name Easy e, e is one of the important figures in the hip-hop music industry, notably one of the founders of N.W., a, a famous gangsta rap group in the late 1980s. AES. However, in 1995, Easy es career and his life were turned upside down by an unexpected development. He was rushed to Cedar sinai Hospital in Los Angeles after suddenly falling to the floor while practicing music with some members of the group. The results of comprehensive medical tests clarified that Easy e was suffering from AIDS pneumonia, a serious medical condition that posed many challenges to his health. Even before receiving an accurate diagnosis, Easy e had to face unwanted reactions from the community and colleagues in the music industry. Although he tried to fight the disease, Easy e was unable to overcome the disease. He passed away on March 26, just one month after being hospitalized, leaving a huge hole in the hip-hop culture and music community. Easy es life and death are an important piece in the evolution of hip-hop music. Even though he is no longer with us, his talent and influence still live on in the songs and memories of those who love hip-hop music. Bobby DeBarge is widely recognized as the lead singer of the R&B group Switch and as the eldest brother of the renowned DeBarge family. His distinctive falsetto vocals set him apart in the music industry and contributed to his fame. 
However, behind the spotlight lay a darker reality. At the tender age of 15, Bobby was introduced to heroin, igniting a destructive path of addiction that would profoundly impact his life and career. The grip of addiction took a significant toll, overshadowing his musical talents and clouding his once promising future. In 1988, Bobby's struggles culminated in a devastating turn of events when he was arrested and subsequently served time in prison for drug trafficking charges. During his incarceration, his health began to deteriorate, exacerbated by an uncontrollable cough that raised concerns among fellow inmates and prison authorities alike. It was during this tumultuous period that Bobby received the life-altering diagnosis. He tested positive for HIV. This revelation further compounded his hardships, adding another layer of complexity to his already turbulent life. Upon his release from prison in 1993, after completing a five-year sentence, Bobby's health continued to decline. Despite his best efforts to revive his music career, his once vibrant spirit was overshadowed by the relentless progression of his illness. Despite his determination to persevere, his health steadily declined, forcing him into hospice care as his family rallied around him in his final days. Tragically, Bobby DeBarge lost his battle with AIDS on August 16, 1995, at the young age of 39. His passing marked the end of a tumultuous journey, leaving behind a legacy tainted by the demons he battled, but also celebrated for the musical brilliance he shared with the world. The video ends here. Remember, there are still many other interesting and engaging videos in my playlist. Before you leave, please leave a comment number one if you found the video interesting, or number two if not. It's that simple, isn't it? Thank you.